What's up everybody? This is the beginning of this year's seed start. I start seeds on March 1st. I've got my little cheat sheet, garden dates to remember. And I check my inventory of seeds from previous years. I keep them in a glass jar in the refrigerator to keep them fresh. And I look at last year's template and I kind and I do this year's figure out how many seeds I need to start. And here I am at Walmart. They got their seeds up. Here are some for $1.50. Here's some for 50 cents. And here on the back side are seeds for 20 cents. Okay, it's March 1st, and I do the first phase of the seeds, which is peppers and beets. I clean the counter real good, wash my hands, Take a paper towel and a spray bottle with regular water. I dampen the paper towel. Then I fold the paper towel over. Spray it a little bit again. That gets the seeds to stick so they stay in place. Then I take a Ziploc bag I spray a little bit more water in there, seal it up, leave a little bit of air in there. So I plug in my electric heat mat, get this for about 20 bucks on Amazon, place some towels down because the heat pad actually gets a little too hot. This distributes the heat. I place about half of the seeds down. Then I take this little digital thermometer, this is the probe, and I place the probe right in the middle, place the other half of the seed zip blocks, and then I cover it with another towel as an insulator blanket, and I keep an eye on the temperature, maintain it between 75 and 85 degrees. Here's pepper seeds after six days germination. Here's some beet seeds after six days. And I take one of my containers from last year. And this is the soil I use to fill up my seedling cups. I got these Sterilite plastic tubs from Target. And I got these containers, they're called rose pots. I got these from Amazon. And they fit perfectly in the tubs. And these larger containers I got from Home Depot. Here I'm printing out labels. These are pepper seeds. Sometimes the seedling root gets caught up in the paper towel. So I'll wet it down a little bit, then I'll use a screwdriver to break up the paper towel. And it frees the seedling. Here's the beet seeds. These bulbs in here are 42 watt fluorescents. 
I've also got a four foot fluorescent shop light and I've got a second one up here on the top and I use the lids from the plastic tubs to block the light As I fluff up the soil, I pick out any grubs that I find. These things will chew up the roots of your plants. And I've actually read that these are Japanese beetle offspring. Okay, it's March 8th and I'm starting the second phase, which is the cherry tomatoes, basil, collards, kale, and lettuce. These are Roma tomatoes. And I place the seeds on the heat mat and cover it with the towel. Here are kale seeds after just two days of germination. They're already a couple inches long. Here's sun sugar and large red cherry tomato seeds after four days of germination. Here's red cell lettuce after five days of germination. If one of my seedlings doesn't look the healthiest, I'll take another seedling out of the Ziploc dig a little hole next to it and plant it and depending on which one is healthiest I'll keep the best one right now it is 40 degrees outside and in the greenhouse it's about 72 degrees And maybe three or four days a week, I'll bring the plants out here into the greenhouse to get accustomed to the sunlight. When the plants have been in the dirt for two weeks, I fertilize with this fish emulsion fertilizer, 511, one tablespoon per gallon. And as the sun sets, I bring the plants back inside and I manually turn off the lights at night and I turn them on in the morning when I wake up. Okay, it's March 28th. I'm about a week behind schedule because the weather's been cold, but it's finally warm enough to plant the peas and the corn. This year, I'm not really adding anything to the soil. I'm just aerating it, mixing it up in the wheelbarrow. I figure the soil has enough like earthworm castings and azomite from the past years that it should be good to go for this year. These are the peas, dwarf gray sugar. I'm using these mainly because they cost 20 cents. And with the peas, I take a spoon, dig little one inch holes, 
I plant eight in each container. Each of my containers has holes drilled at the bottom for drainage. And these containers are called bus boxes and I get them at Sam's Club in the restaurant section. I'm planting two different kinds of corn. This one's like a shorter variety. This is a taller variety. I make little one inch holes with this spoon. And then I put one seed in each hole and then push the dirt on top. Okay, the plants are now about three weeks in the dirt. And it's going to be in the mid 70s today, so I'm going to bring these outside and feed them. And now I'll start to fertilize once per week with the fish emulsion. I buy this by the gallon from HomeDepot.com. And it's one tablespoon per gallon of water. And this one gallon jug will feed all the seedlings. Here are the plants at four weeks in the dirt. With these compact fluorescent bulbs, you want to keep them maybe like six inches above the plants. Put your hand here to feel the heat. Make sure it's not too hot. And with the four foot fluorescent shop lights, you want to keep the plants about an inch or two below the bulbs. But they can grow up and touch the bulbs and be okay because the bulbs don't get very hot. Okay, today is April 9th, and I'm going to transplant the lettuce, the kale, and the collards, and the beets. I like to water the plants right before I transplant because it helps them slide out of the containers easier. I'm also moving the peas up onto the deck. Okay, I fluff up the soil one more time. If there's any big chunks, I'll like break them up with my hands. And same with the raised beds. I'm not adding anything to the soil. I'm just fluffing it up this year. On the edges of the beds, I cut little notches every 12 inches for a square foot. I take a putty knife and connect the lines. And now I have a square foot planting grid. And I just noticed I made a mistake and didn't start enough plants. So I'm gonna have to space them out a little bit more. Usually I plant one per square foot, so there would be 14. This time I'm doing five in each row, there's 10. So there's four less. But this m might actually work out okay because they're kind of crowded when they're one per square foot. So this might be good to have them a little bit more spaced out.
Okay, I'm going to plant another fig tree. Celeste fig. Cost $11 from Lowe's. Figs are my favorite fruit. Followed by the grapevines and then the apple trees. And Celeste fig is probably my best producer. Here are the plants at five weeks in the dirt. The lights are hung with a chain and as the plants grow taller, I lift it up. And this raises the light so the plants have more space. Last year I grew catnip up on the deck and some seeds fell down and they're growing between the stones. And I've got a little spot picked out. Maybe the neighborhood cats will enjoy it if the deer don't eat it first. For the first week or so and make sure it's well watered. And I also take a bucket and place it next to the plant to give it a little bit of shade so the sun doesn't get too intense. Because this plant was only getting about two hours of direct sun under the deck. And out here it's like 10 hours, which is too intense. Okay, it's April 15th and I check the weather forecast. Normally I'd transplant everything today, but there's a strong thunderstorm coming through that's going to have 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts. And then also Monday night, it's going to get down to 38 degrees. So it looks like I'm going to wait until Tuesday to transplant everything. Okay, it's April 17th, and today I'm transplanting everything outside. And the seedlings have been in the dirt for five weeks and five days. Here's the tomato plants. With the tomato plants, I take some scissors and cut these lower leaves off because you want to avoid having leaves close to the dirt because that's what transfers blight onto the tomato plant. So I started four basil plants and I'm actually going to plant them down here by my compost pile because down here I don't really have to maintain them and all I really like is just to pick a fresh basil leaf every so often to add to a salad or some soups. Okay, got all the tomatoes and peppers and corn all transplanted. Now I'm waiting for the weather to warm up a little bit more and I'll direct plant the pole beans and the cucumbers. And these are the extra plants that are left over. I always start some extra ones. I use two zip ties to attach the cages to these metal posts for wind strengthening. I like to use these mini binder clips to lock these smaller cages together. It makes the whole caging structure a lot sturdier and they'll last about three years before they start to deteriorate. Last night it got down to 34 degrees and I think I'm going to have a problem. There's some frost on the plants. I'll come back and do an update to see if the plant survived. The plants up here on the deck look like they have the most frost. You can see like the crystal structure. Okay, it's about five hours later in the day. The lettuce has bounced back 100%. The tomatoes and peppers had me worried at first. They were wilted and there's some leaf damage. But now that the sun's out, they've recuperated, sprung back up. 
So I think I really lucked out that none of the plants died. Probably one degree colder and everything would have been wiped out. And if a bunch of plants didn't make it, I would have filled in with some of these extra plants. And worst case scenario, I would have bought a bunch of them from Home Depot. It probably would have cost a hundred bucks. Okay, last night it got down to 33 degrees. This time I put some buckets on tomato plants. Okay, everything seems to have survived. 33 degrees. Four days ago, I started some radish seeds. This variety is called French Breakfast. It looks kind of like a carrot. And I plant them on the outside edge of these containers. Well, I guess I'll end the video here. In the next video, I'll have the pole beans starting, cucumbers, and the first harvest. And I'll show my layout, explain which varieties are planted. Thanks for watching.